Hi everyone, this is the second lesson looking at chemical reactions. And in this lesson, I'm going to cover corrosion, including rusting, as well as look at some reactions that involve acids. We're going to start off by looking at corrosion, but broadly speaking, when a reaction occurs that needs oxygen, we call it an oxidation reaction. And a good way to remember that is that oxy at the start of the word oxidation. It sounds very similar to oxygen. In the last lesson, we looked at combustion, and we specifically looked at the two types of combustion. Complete combustion, which is when you've got a rich supply of oxygen, and incomplete combustion, which is when the oxygen is restricted. But nonetheless, in both of those reactions, you've still got oxygen. So we say combustion is an oxidation reaction. Corrosion is also a type of oxidation reaction because oxygen is a requirement. Corrosion breaks down metals to form other compounds, usually after they're exposed to water, air, or other chemicals. And when you think of oxygen, you often think of it in a gas form in the air around us, but you have to remember it's also a key component in water. Water molecules are H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. So just remember that when we refer to oxygen, it doesn't necessarily refer to oxygen gas specifically. It could be the oxygen in water or other chemicals as well. A great example of corrosion that you've probably seen before is rusting. Iron and most grades of steel react with air and water to form rust. Rusting causes the surface of the metal to become flaky and fall apart, allowing rusting to then continue to the next layer down. And over time, this makes the metal thinner and weaker. A simple balanced equation for rusting is iron reacting with oxygen gas to produce iron oxide. And if you introduce salt or salt water into this equation, it acts as a catalyst, which means it speeds up the rate of this reaction. And so that's why if you live near the beach where there's salt water in the air, you're more likely to see rusting occurring than someone that lives more inland. Rusting is probably the most common example of corrosion that you'll see, but we do have some other examples here as well. Copper corrodes, after reacting with gases in the air, to form a green coating called verdigris. And the Statue of Liberty is a great example of this. That's made of bronze, and initially it was a bronze colour. But because a key component of bronze is copper, over time it's gone from a copper colour or a bronze colour to this green colour because of that corrosion of copper over time. Silver corrodes after reacting with oxygen to produce a black coating, and we call this process tarnishing. Aluminium is very reactive. Its surface reacts with air to form a layer of aluminium oxide, which protects the aluminium from further corrosion. When this is done purposely, it's called anodizing because it forms this really strong layer on top of the aluminium. Okay, we're now going to talk about some reactions that involve acids, but in order to do so, we need to know what an acid actually is. And so to explain what an acid is, we have to talk about this measurement tool called the pH scale. And it's a scale that goes from zero all the way to 14, with seven being in the middle. And so the chemicals or liquids that we test that are at this end with a pH of 12, 13, 14, we say that those are alkaline or basic. So examples include drain cleaner, bleach, soap, ammonia. These are very toxic chemicals and they can cause some skin irritation as well with the exception of soap. Moving down towards the middle, we have a pH of 7 which is considered to be neutral. And pure water is more or less considered to have a neutral pH of seven. And as we move down into lower pH levels, we get into our acids. So we have lemon juice, stomach acid, and battery acid. These are our acids. In order to measure the pH of a chemical, we can use a number of different techniques. We can use litmus paper, which is a type of paper where when you add it to the chemical, it changes color. And then depending on that color change, that will tell you whether it's an acid or a base. Or we can also use liquid pH indicator. And when you add this liquid into the chemical that you're testing, it'll change color. And that color change will determine how much of an acid or how much of a base that chemical is.
Acids can corrode metals, usually breaking them down into a salt and hydrogen gas. So generally, the equation is an acid being added to a metal, and these two react together to produce a salt and hydrogen gas. This salt isn't your normal table salt that you put on your fish and chips. This isn't sodium chloride necessarily. When we refer to a salt in these types of reactions, it's a substance that's produced by the metal replacing the hydrogen atom in the acid. So it's a substance that's produced. But more importantly, we also get this hydrogen being produced, which is highly flammable. A great example of this reaction that we tend to do in the lab is we get a strip of magnesium metal, like so, and we place it inside hydrochloric acid. And then we put a stopper on top of this test tube. And this creates bubbles, hydrogen bubbles, and also magnesium chloride is being produced as well. But this is also an exothermic reaction. If you do this in the lab, and you feel the glass on the outside, you'll feel it's getting quite warm. So it's exothermic, it's releasing energy. After a while, after a few minutes, you can then hold a match to the top of the test tube, open up the stopper, and that lets out all of that hydrogen that was being produced. And it creates this little mini explosion. It's called a pop test because it makes a pop sound when it happens. The second acid reaction we're going to look at is what happens when you add an acid to a base. So let's look at this pH scale again. We have an acid, one of these chemicals, being combined with a base or an alkaline chemical, which is one of these. And when that happens, they balance each other out and you get a neutral chemical being produced, which in this case is water. So generally speaking, the reaction can be written as an acid reacting with a base to produce a salt. And remember, a salt isn't necessarily your typical salt that you have in your pantry. It's the metal from a base, in this case, replacing the hydrogen in the acid. And we get water being produced, which is our neutral substance. Let's look at an example. Let's combine nitric acid with potassium oxide, which is a base. When that happens, it produces potassium nitrate and water. Potassium nitrate, let's look at this in a bit more detail. This is the salt that's being produced. The K from the potassium oxide has replaced the H, the hydrogen atom, in the nitric acid. And that's produced, so instead of HNO3, we get KNO3. And this is our salt that's produced, as well as water which is our neutral substance because the acid has balanced out the base and produced this neutral substance. A more relatable example of this is when people get heartburn. Heartburn is basically when you have the hydrochloric acid from inside your stomach rising up into your esophagus and starting to burn your esophagus. Your stomach has a mucus lining inside coating all the walls and that prevents the walls from being burnt by the acid. But your esophagus doesn't have that mucus lining to protect it from the acid. So when acid rises up into your esophagus, it starts to burn your esophagus and becomes quite painful. To fix this, people can take an antacid tablet. And that's essentially a base that neutralizes that acid that's risen up into your esophagus. So far, we've covered what happens when acids react with metals and with bases. Our third and last acid reaction is going to look at what happens when we add an acid to a carbonate. When an acid reacts with a type of base called a carbonate, the reaction produces salt and water as it would with an acid-base reaction. But in this case, because it's a carbonate, it also produces carbon dioxide. So generally speaking, the reaction is an acid combining with or reacting with a carbonate to produce a salt water, which is our neutral pH 7 substance, and also carbon dioxide in the form of bubbles, usually. That's how you can tell that uh, this reaction is occurring. If it forms bubbles, you can tell that carbon dioxide is being produced. Another way that you can tell that it's an acid carbonate reaction is if you look over on the right here, 
we've got three very common carbonates. We've got calcium carbonate, CaCO3, sodium carbonate, NaCO3, and hydrogen carbonate, HCO3. And what do you notice that these three substances have in common? You notice that they each have CO3 at the end. And that's one way that you can tell whether it's not just an acid base reaction, it's an acid carbonate reaction. Because not only is carbon dioxide being produced, but you can identify the chemical as a carbonate because it ends in CO3. An example of this reaction is hydrochloric acid reacting with bicarbonate soda to produce salt. And in this case, this is your typical table salt that you would eat because the sodium, the metal in the bicarb soda, has replaced the hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid and it's produced NaCl, which is sodium chloride, table salt. It's also produced water because at the end of the day, this is an acid base reaction which produces water and a salt. But because this is a carbonate reaction, we also get carbon dioxide being produced. And when you do this reaction, you can actually see the bubbles being produced. Let's now go through a summary of today's lesson. Oxidation reactions are reactions that involve oxygen as a reactant. Combustion and corrosion are examples of oxidation reactions because they both require oxygen. Corrosion is when metals are reacting with oxygen and breaking down to form other compounds. Rusting is an example of a corrosion reaction. The pH scale is a measurement tool that allows us to determine whether a chemical is an acid with a low pH, a base with a high pH, or is neutral with a pH of 7. An acid metal reaction is when an acid reacts with metal to produce a salt and hydrogen gas. An acid base reaction is when an acid reacts with a base to form a salt and water. Often this is called a neutralization reaction because the low pH of the acid neutralizes the high pH of the base and that produces a neutral chemical, water. An acid carbonate reaction is when an acid reacts with a specific type of base called a carbonate to produce a salt, water, and carbon dioxide gas.